Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. My name is Bob Wright. I'm here for the transitioning show with Carmel and Julian. Hello. Here in the background. Welcome, guys. Hello, hello. Hi, everybody. <laughs> I think Julian might have stepped away for a second. He'll be here shortly. Mom, and welcome, sorry. everyone, in the chat room. Hello. Sorry, I... I didn't launch the chat room until uh, the last couple minutes. So if you don't have the chat room, refresh your screen. It should show up there at the bottom. My fault. Sorry. I'll make sure I get it up earlier next time. But welcome, everybody, who is in the chat room right now. Carolyn, Marie, uh, all a bunch of guests. Thank you for coming in. Uh, we've got an interesting show. Oh, and before I forget, happy birthday, Julian. <laughs> I know you didn't want to do this on air, but <laughs> you weren't going to. Well, thank you. Somebody thank was going to say it, so I'm actually to be first. Another Happy thing birthday. I just I just noticed is that we're going to pass through my birth time after one hour and ten minutes in. Oh, you know what time you were born? Yep, it's on my birth certificate with my uh, little little uh, ink of my foot footprint. Hmm. Yeah. Your birth You still have one of those, huh? Yeah, yeah. I found it when the uh, last time I visited, my mother gave it to me. She said, I found this somewhere. And she gave me that and a bunch of um, photos of me as a child and flooded lots of memories and emotions back into my consciousness. And um, interesting, because it helped me go through processing my past, helped me um, have time markers to work from. And um, very, very wonderful experience to be able to revisit and um, and see what, what really went on from a new perspective, right? Mm-hmm. Well, dude, I, I mean, think, birthdays are usually a reflective time, you know, just like you said. <clears throat> think about where you were a year ago. Where was I a year ago? Yeah. Um, we were, I think what I was doing was, I was really into Michael Monk's uh, courses, and I was talking to some people about that. And um, we didn't have a collective imagination show on it, I don't believe. We only had a couple shows at that time, right? Or maybe really only just the collective imagination. Yeah, the collective imagination we started. Uh, I mean, it wasn't like a suite of of shows. No, no. <clears throat> no. If we had something, we had to get it done in two hours. Yep. <laughs> now, yep, think, that's true. When, and when, it it when, seems like forever ago, though. Yeah, I think the discussion of what, when, when does this discussion of divine providence come up? I can't remember. That was probably around that time. Around that time? It was around that time, somewhere in there, yeah. And we were starting to get serious about uh, talking about the end of the world, you know? Oh, the, oh that's right. All of the anticipation of. December. That's what that was. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I remember some really, I'm going to say flaky, but I know they're listening, so I'm just teasing. Flaky friends of mine said, don't worry about school. You're not going to be finishing it. <laughs> oh, Start goodness. in September. Yeah. I'm like, hmm. you, you know what? I've been hearing that my whole life. You're never going to graduate. You know, you never have to worry about getting your license because Armageddon's going to come before then. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell? I, I, I've probably been driving as long as you, you know, some some of my nieces and nephews have been alive. This is crazy. <laughs> but I'm glad that we're still here. Oh yeah. I can't yeah. Be surprised. <laughs> we're still here, and and things are moving moving into the next. Yeah. We're well, definitely not standing still. No, no, we're not standing still. <laughs> not at all. Everything. I was, I was wondering how, you know, back then, what were we gonna do to ascend in time? I mean, my perception of like what ascended was is nothing like where I am now. Oh, because, oh. you know, it's like a completely, completely different story. Completely. <laughs> completely I, you know, I've met gurus the... and stuff, and I was like. Okay, 
I don't think I'm going to be able to handle life like that person, you know. I don't I don't think I'd like to do that. <laughs> mm. No. Yeah. My my ideas about what ascension is and and all of it's completely changed since then. Completely different uh point of view, you know, as how this is all taking place cuz now I'm I'm well I'm going through it. So <laughs> It's well, been, uh, yeah, I mean, did did you think you were going to zip zap be in another place in one moment? Did you really did you really know that? Did you think that? I didn't. I didn't think that. I knew there was going to be a transitioning of some sort. <laughs> so slip it in. Yep. Slip that in. There was a transitioning. Yeah. <laughs> it was yeah, uh, it was definitely a stepping, like you know, like yeah. stage. You know, we went we went from. Uh, an ego based uh paradigm to a heart centered one and it took place relative like extremely quickly in in historical terms i mean we 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 shifted big time last year and up until now um i i can't even claim to be the same person no. i I, yep. would, I would be compl- i would be totally lying and you know what? You know what else comes with that is that although I, I go, I've gone through the same thing. Although I'm different, it's when people look at me, they're not. They're different too. Like they're not so unaware of the shift to to say, "Well, you went off the deep end, and there's no saving you," because they they're going through some. Low, some ex, uh, experiences themselves. They're going through their own little discoveries. You know, most of the sleep people that I've known. So it's like no one is really 100% surprised. You know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, people who have been with, with the story and aware of the changes that they've been going through and working towards this, you know, what way showers, light workers, whatever you want to label these be- <laughs> new ages. <laughs> That's what they used to call me in the eighties. Oh, you one of those new ages, aren't you? <laughs> mm. <laughs> it's like a dirty word, you know. And now mm. now it's it it's definitely marks it marks a decade of work, uh, consciousness work that was initiated in, you know, um in communities. You know, in communities, not just personally. It's, it's, you know, when you find it I try to think back on when when there was a walking master, you know, a really adept in mm. being, and to to be able to hang out with somebody who was seeing the illusion for what it was, and, and you know, no internet, <laughs> no television, but just being lucky enough to have been born around these people at that time, um, and so. It, was it going slowly? Yeah, I think it was going much more slowly back then than it is now. I'm really, I'm very grateful for the internet. And recently, of all resources, even gasoline. <laughs> so, so you know, how have I changed? I've changed my perspective on how I view the world, and it's kind of dovetailed with the things that I suspected before. But there's much, it's much more hands-on now. I can actually consciously and uh presently be involved whereas a year ago we were waiting and watching with great big eyes what's happening what's going on you know hanging on every every video every radio you know at that time what was i listening to i was listening to uh grand duye his his friday night um broadcast was the only one that i i had that I felt was close to what I was feeling and thinking and experiencing. Um, and then bam, bam, 5D started to blossom. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so, so yeah, we've all, I think all of us who are listening have, have been able to earmark certain uh, forks in the road of our getting to the mo- this moment of now where we know what we know now in anticipation of the next moment, the next now. Um, but also last year, you know, when everybody, lots of people were saying, you know, there's going to be a, a cut, and we're going to move. And I'm thinking, no, that's, uh, 
things would fall apart. You know, that's the illusion is built, the cellular body, you know, the trees, the earth, that doesn't take into account everything in, in my mind, you know, I'm part science and part art, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I watched it through the time waves that I use in when I when I mess around with the numbers and time, and I could see a very gentle and intelligent progression of change, of expansion, and so I pretty much was never shaken from that. But um, but I was watching when OPPT came out. I went, well, there it is, you know, there it is. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> there's the first event in the new time, the new calendar, you know, according to the Mayans. Well, I was noting um, the divine province material, you know, the whole sovereignty movement and all that. <clears throat> it was, you know, it actually wasn't new, but it was constantly making progress, it seemed. They they constantly had new experiences to draw upon and 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 things to point to that related to successes and whatnot. And so, yeah, when the One People's Public Trust sort of showed up, it was like, mm, this is like that, but better at this point. Mm-hmm. And it got better as the discussion was expanding in that in that realm. And, of course, what was important was the real part that interests me was how does spirit actually be involved in in the in the scheme of things it was like not discussed enough almost sure you're god and you're sovereign because you are the creator but there wasn't you know that's just too broad a blanket statement people need to go in and explore these subjects why is it that you're sovereign because you're god and why doesn't everybody know that they're god yet you know No because I'll tell you why. Because mainstream media is lying. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> and that's yeah. why. <laughs> you know, it, it's it's bred out of you. It's really it's it's indoctrinated out of you. You know, when I was teaching, you can go to any second grade class, and you can ask them, "What do you want to be when you grow up?" None of them said, you know, I want to work at the factory or, you know, I want to work part-time at Walmart. Mm. They all wanted to be princesses and astronauts and, you know, they (laughs) wanted, they dreamt big, you know. I want to, you know, I want to be an astronaut. I want to, you know, I want to be a professional baseball player. I want to be, you know, a ballerina. I want to. They had really high aspirations. You know, they didn't think of themselves as small. But you take that same group of kids in 11th grade and ask them that same question, you'll be shocked at how much their answers have changed. And it's all about, you know, the limitations that we place upon ourselves, that we adopt as our own, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and we do it because we want to be acceptable. We want mm-hmm. to feel accepted. Mm-hmm. We want to fit in. We want to, you know, to feel that connection with others. But what we end up doing is we end up compromising ourselves. We lose our connection with ourselves in order to please others. And that has mm-hmm. to be completely reversed. You know, and by and large by a lot of people, I mean just listening to the conversation as it changed. Like you said, way back then, there wasn't a lot of spiritual content. People were worried about, you know, their monetary, um, Mm -hmm. the economy, the geopolitical structure, you know, all all of these external things. But we listen to the shows today, and they all have that spiritual, you know, because that becomes the most important focus. How is this making me feel? You know, it's become your barometer. It's become my barometer, you know, as to what is bullshit and what is not. You know, how does that make me feel? You know, how do I feel about this? You know, and and before people, you know, as I was raised, you never, you never took in consideration how you felt. Look into the Bible and see how that feels about 
And there's no questioning then, it either. And there's oh. no questioning it, no. Yeah. You know, it was always to, to look at something external as the barometer, as the guide, as the, you know, the ruling stick for what was right and wrong and completely ignore what it was that you were feeling. And now, I don't care if somebody shows me some ancient scroll, you know, written, you know, 20,000 years ago, you know, and it's imprinted by anatomic, I don't even know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's not going to, if it doesn't jive with how I feel, it's still bullshit. Until it's not. <laughs> you know, but until I'm, you know, can resonate with it, it cannot be my truth. And it's become the most important thing. You know, people, you know, have to first understand that that <clears throat> uniqueness that's you, that unique perception of things, that authentic beingness of you is exactly what's needed right now. You know, and it's easier to access it at this point as well. It is much easier. Much, it is much easier. easier. I mean, even when people come at you with with their demands and commands and pressure, it's it's so much easier now. And I'm not, and I'm not. I noticed that the children do this. <laughs> when I was a child, you didn't do this. You got clobbered, so you just didn't do it. But now, what are you eating? Are you eating something good? <laughs> so we <get> <laughs> Who's unwrapping candy? <laughs> well, now, but now it's easier to now it's just so much easier to kind of rebuke somebody else's stuff, um, you know, and you can yes them and walk away and do your own thing, you know, if you don't want to have a com, you know combat with them or any confrontations. But um, actually, um, I'm finding that recently a lot of conversations in my arena my realm, had started to smooth themselves right out. I started to notice that people who wouldn't wouldn't allow you to have your own opinion would get would go directly to, uh, well, I don't like you anymore. <laughs> if, you, <laughs> if you don't agree with me or, or I, you know, you know, that's starting to smooth itself right out. Um, is it a reflection of what's happening in me? Yes. But I noticed that when I changed, when I'm as I change, I'm noticing that the the responses I'm getting in the in the mirror are are changing as well. So that's been very encouraging for me. Um, although the summer has been really a lot of work. I mean, it's been a lot of personal internal work, lots of it. And anybody else? Anybody else? And we got their hand up in the chat room about how the, the personal work they did this year regarding standing up to, in your presence. As you're getting older, it's getting easier. But again, I noticed the little ones. The little ones don't have any problem with it. <laughs> oh, you know, and they're, and and you know, the, the social the social norm, quote unquote, wants again wants to medicate them, you know, if they can, to keep them subdued. But uh, there was a there was a little second grader, and I, I knew that things were changing when when I heard this this little kid. You know, seven years old. <clears throat> he was so brilliant. He was bored. And I could tell he was bored in school. So just like any other bored kid, he, he was he was the biggest troublemaker. Yeah. He was the most uncooperative. <laughs> he just, you know, he just but he was brilliant. He would he would make the most amazing artwork. And I remember the one time um he was the the teacher was the the teacher was trying to get him to to sit down for lunch or to stand in line or whatever and he wasn't cooperating and she just went off and started yelling at him mm. and this kid looked at looked at the teacher in the eye and this little 7 year old this is what came out of his uh. mouth don't get mad at me because the only reason why you're a teacher is because you want to control little people because you have no control over your life. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> really? I, I swear to God, <laughs> this little kid, this is what he said. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> oh, <shoot. laughs> I was 
like, oh, that is funny. <laughs> he 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 hit her with some real hard truth. <laughs> oh and he, man! She, she she just looked at him and stared, you know, and, and drug him to the principal's office. But I was like, wow. <laughs> where, Seriously. where are these kids coming from? I, I I sat and you know I'm watching YouTube videos of this little four year old kid explaining multi dimensionality, mm-hmm. <laughs> like explaining it like like he had been lecturing for years about it, uh. you know. Wax in the, in the cute little voice. In this cute little voice. <laughs> you know, I'm like, whoa. You know, I watched an eight-year-old kid put this crystal grid together, and he knew exactly what each piece was for, what they did, how the energy lines intersected, what, how it opened up a portal, how far it went up in the air, and what its purpose was. Hmm. Mm. Mm. Send me that video. I'll send it to you. I'll put it in the chat as soon as I can relocate it again. But <laughs> this is this is what you know. I'm I'm looking at you know. I've I've watched videos where kids speak out in the classroom. You know they're not they're they're not these tacit you know followers anymore. They speak their mind. They speak their truth, and you cannot get them you can't to control do them. something. Right. That is not in their heart. To, they won't do it. They just you know, won't do it. Bob, you know what we should do? We should start an after-school program called Unschool. Unschool. Something like that. Oh, yeah. That would be, that would be really cool. <laughs> They're like, okay, everything you just learned, forget it. You need to learn <laughs> to be yourself. <laughs> you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look up that video, and I'll put it in the <laughs> chat room. I, uh... I have a little side gig that I do. I teach babysitting safety and, and pediat- child and pediatric CPR and adult CPR. And when I work with the kids, there's, there's two, kinds of, just two kinds of classes you get. You get, you get the group that sign, their parents, they all, their parents, all of their parents sign them up for this. They didn't sign up for this. <laughs> yeah. You get the group, you know, whose parents sign them up um, that, that are attending after school. I mean, right after school. Mm-hmm. And then, and these kids are exhausted. They're mm-hmm. already zoned out. Um, and then you get the kids on a Saturday, who really, in all right, should be running around. But the program and the protocol is talking and video, and you know, and doing games and examples, talking and video, and do, from the American Heart Association. And it's really funny because we we send out these, we send out. Uh, um, Re- anonymous reviews. What do you call those? Yeah, reviews, right? You pass them out, and they t- they say what they liked about it. They say what they would like to have changed about it. And they, all the children say, too much talking, too much video. <laughs> like, well, you know, they really like it when we play with the dolls and the mannequins. They really like the hands-on. And when I was with my children, um, I, I sent them to public school. I did, but I also did after school care and I did summer care and I was quite Montessori minded. And so I used to use that kind of methodology, you know, like as they grow, they use their hands, they participate in everything in the household, you know, the pots, the pans, the everything. And they learn by doing, by playing. Mm. So so when when these when the kids have and it's really funny because even the boys the dolls get passed out, all the equipment gets passed out, we show them how to do all this stuff, how to diaper, how to feed, how to burp, how to hold, all of this stuff, all this safety-minded and be careful. That's another human being. These children are riveted when they when they're have their hands on. When we make them sit in the chair and watch a video and listen to the, you know, listen to the instructions or listen to the rules, it doesn't go in. And, and you should see all the blank faces. They just, they're thinking, on something else, and they should be. I mean, that's a, uh-huh. a normal brain. They really should be. So uh, trying to engage them is very, is really hard. Especially, you know, on both of those situations, one where they're just so exhausted, they're zoned out, and one where they're just like they're wired and they need to pop up and down. But um, it's a, they're always a delight when it comes to the hands-on and and dealing in a caring situation, which I'm really always amazed at. 
um, again, particularly with the boys, because we know in this particular society, boys are not encouraged to do these things, ever, you know, um, but yeah. but here we have them learning how to do CPR, how to how to assess the first aid situation, how to call 911, and the children, they're like, okay, now we're on the job, now we're, now we're playing with you. But, um, but the rest of it is like, I just don't know how the school systems have turned out anybody or anything the way they're set up. Um, and I, I haven't been there for a while. My kids have been out for a while. My grandson is not quite in. So I'm hoping that by the time um, this next couple of years rolls around, the educators are going to wake up as well and take that, and take that on full, full force. And dealing with those those, ener- those high energy children that are coming in who don't want to be medicated, had a phone call. I had a caller the other day on one of the other programs who said um, the boy who was ADD, ADHD, refused. He got himself off of his medicines, and he he educated his parents how to deal with him. Yeah, he, I heard he, about that. Yeah, right. So these are the children that are coming. Well, my my, uh, my brother's girlfriend's daughter, and she's about nine years old, and she didn't want to have to go get the vaccination shots, um, which they were requiring. They were telling all the kids that they had to get this vaccination. She didn't want to, and she argued with her mom. You know, she didn't want to get the shot, and the mom was like, "Well, they say it's it's supposed to be good for you, and they say it's." You know, it's going to, it's not going to cause any problems. And they say, and the little girl looked at her and says, Mommy, who's they? Yeah. 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 Where's the data? She said, she goes, I don't know. The the expert, she goes, you don't know them, but you know me. And I don't want it. Right. Right. Yeah. Who's the day? Where's the data? Uh, You know, where's the data? Show me the data. He used to say that to my dad. My father, you know, watched a lot of quote unquote documentaries. This was the the eighties and the nineties. And you know, he was big for watching doctor shows. He never went to a doctor. <laughs> you know, the surgical shows yeah. and stuff. Never went to a doctor unless he unless he passed out. You know. <laughs> but he'd go, you know, he'd always tell everybody what he heard, but he would never do it. And I would say, really? Because I was in medicine a long time. Really? Where's the data? Show me the abstracts. I want to see the abstracts on that. You know, don't absorb everything you see. Think. Think. And choose. And choose by your heart, by how your heart feels. It is It is really, I think, important. The kids that are coming up right now, they're wise well beyond their years. And we are it it would do us a disservice not to pay attention to the children right now i mean they they have a, an unbelievable because they're born into this new energy they and don't they know have, what it's supposed to be like they know what it's supposed to be like you know yeah. and it's real important you know when they're in the those formative years you know that was a time when in ancient tribes, you know, the native tribes, they would observe the kid. They would allow the kid to develop, you know. And according to what they saw, you know, they would they would assign, you know, okay, this he, he's interested in mechanics, you know, and this one's interested in, you know, botany, and this one's interested. But they were tailor-designed. They were allowed to develop and to pursue their own interests. <clears throat> and whenever the tribe had any major problem that that they, they had to get a, 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 a an answer to, the first group they would ask would be the children. Mm. I like that. Mm. Ask I the children first. And it was also, you know, the similar you know thing was displayed in in Star Wars. You know, when there was a problem, ask the children first. And it was the children who who, who solved Obi-Wan's problem. Yeah. So, so, they're so pure. I mean, they just they just speak. They just speak well, from what's what, you know, that what floats across their consciousness. They also come with a drive a lot of them to be talking and speaking to very specific experiences that people are going through. Like sort of like 
uh, an established deprogrammer coming in, you know. And um, and then we what do we do? We go ahead and reprogram them. Say no, no, no. You're not going to come around and deprogram us anymore. We're supposed to program you. And so they stand in the majority rule of this environment, frustrated. Mm-hmm. Majority rule in terms of how everyone in general are, are thinking and speaking. Mm-hmm. And that's, um, I was talking with my friends earlier today, it's the big challenge really looking going and going forward is there's the status quo energy, the pre-designed reality of how we're supposed to place our energy here and there and allow ourselves to be fed off of. And then there is the reality that we know is fundamentally more true than the illusion. And from that place, you know, the best teachers are the kids because they haven't they haven't been grounded in the in the in the uh, the world's rules yet. You know? They're the ones who can talk to us about what's true. Right. And um you know this is this is I noticed this when I noticed this when I was really young. <clears throat> Cats and little tiny babies always look to the same places in the room where nothing is. You know, you see them staring at the same thing. You know, and I was like, what are they seeing? I mean, I recognized when I was about, like, 12 years old, you know, just from my little sister. And I would watch her, and she and the cat were always in sync. They were always looking at the same things. <clears throat> mm-hmm. I'm like, wow, mm-hmm. what, are, what are they seeing? Mm-hmm. Why can't I see it? Yeah. That happened in Shaft over and over again. I was drawn to look at a specific place. I'm like... Why am I why am I looking in this place? I didn't even know. But my head would literally like turn itself when I was not paying attention to my body and I just find myself staring at the same spots. And I'd be, you know, in different places, but I'd look back in context wherever I was standing, I just happened to be looking back at a single spot. And that's when I started seeing like, wait a second, there's something there, actually there. And then things went nuts. <laughs> That's when you start seeing things you didn't think you'd ever see. <laughs> then you then you then you have just enough conscious attention to what could be there and then it starts saying, Oh, finally got your attention. Let's get down to business. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well uh-huh. yes. Yeah. You you see things out the corner of your eye. Mm-hmm. You know, and you go, Okay. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what you want unless you unless you materialize a little bit more. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm clueless. I only know you're there. I only know you're there. There's somebody who wants in the chat room who wants to talk about a gathering that they have part they're participating in um this weekend. Uh Whitney's that computer would be Whitney. that's Whitney, she wants to she wants to talk about she wants to share what's happening in at the camp out. Whitney, are are you on the are you in the switchboard, Whitney? If you're in the switchboard, give me Oh, that's Katie. Give me your area code and I will Yeah, what's the area code, y'all? Whitney is in the queue. I'm trying to figure out how to do this. <laughs> and then, you don't feel bad. <laughs> Ask the children for the answers. Right. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna take a chance that this is Whitney here. Oh, it's four oh six. It's the only one with their hand up. So I'll. <laughs> is that you, Whitney? Hello. 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 That's you. <laughs> <laughs> we can hear you. You got us. Four oh six. Four oh six. That's it. Yay! Hey. Hey. Hey, we're on the call. You guys come over. So um, we're almost <laughs> completely here with our camp call. We've got two people, Jennifer Williams and uh, Casey, I don't know his last name, coming up from Alabama, and they're almost here. And uh, it has been fantastic. We just visited a Buddhist temple today, and they were having a peace celebration. So uh, we spent, there's a, it's just amazing, there's like this, uh, I, I don't know, what, what do you call it? The shrine? 
in the middle of a very geometric pattern that they've created this temple of a thousand Buddhas. And uh, we were able to do a meditation right around there. All of us uh, stood in a line around, you know, around what part of the, the temple and, and did a meditation just uh, an hour ago. It was really awesome. That sounds awesome. So how many people yeah. did you say you had out there? I think 21. Yeah, they they want to say all hi. We'll see if we can. Uh, hi. <laughs> Aww. So That's yeah, awesome. we've got yeah. how many? We've got Kathy, Vegas, and Jenna. We have Jenny and Marsha. We have Garrett and Brandon. We have Heather and Richard. We've got Patrick, Ahoy. myself, uh, Ahoy, Mark, and uh, Heidi, Ethan, and um, Ken and Katie. And Katie. And Katie. There's a girl on the side of the camera in the rear. Hi, okay. all of you. <laughs> it sounds like these guys are having an amazing time. Yeah. And I look, forward, there. To, I'm I look sorry? forward to our chat tonight. Um, well, probably like I don't know if you, if you had plans, but what if we just did a little thing now? Were you going to do a, a meditation later in the show? Um. I don't know. We 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 didn't plan. We don't we don't ever really plan these things. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the thought that you know we're on this energetic ley line and it's been knocking people out. Like everybody kind of got here and just kind of went to sleep. <laughs> um, uh-huh. If if we can push you know, everybody on the phone call and uh, if there's just good energy going around, maybe that would be pretty powerful. Well. Figure out what an intention you would like, and maybe towards. Um, we don't want to do it in the in the in the middle. Usually, I like to save the meditations towards the end because everybody uh-huh. kind of like afterwards. It's well, hard to get people to talk. <laughs> mm-hmm. We're gonna be. Um, why don't you just put me back on hold, and uh, we'll do it when we're ready. When you're ready. Okay. We're gonna do the call. Love you, Bob. Love you, Bob. Love you guys. Cool. Awesome. I'm, Sounds I'm like gonna, I could uh, hear a, a dog breathing on their line for a while. This little. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Wow! Another gathering. Mm-hmm. And I can imagine. I, oh, mm-hmm. I just know what they're going through, and it's so amazing. Oh. I wish I was there. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's happening like every weekend going on out now. Pretty sure. Well, I just I just received an email and they're they're planning on having one over here on the East Coast in Pennsylvania, so Oh, you're lucky. In Amish country. So that that may be coming hey. up I think on October 4th somebody mentioned. Really? Where is it? Uh in Lancaster. Lancaster. Or depending on what part of Pennsylvania you're from, Lancaster. <laughs> <laughs> but for me, it's Lancaster. Okay, keep us posted on that. I will. Uh-huh. I, I don't. I don't have all the details, but I do remember it coming across my email sometime today. So there's, there's, yeah, lots of gatherings, and for any of you who have not been to one. I highly encourage it. <laughs> you know, if you can if you can spare the time or you can find some way to actually uh to make it to one of these, I would highly encourage it. It is a life changing thing. It's like um it's like soul food but at the level where it's like nurtures you at so many energetic levels. You know, mm-hmm. not just it's not just like a good song, soul food. It's like, oh my God, where has this soul food been hiding? You know, <laughs> like who's been hiding in the back of the pantry? Like this has got to get used. We got to do this. <laughs> this, gotta, this. We got to use this. <laughs> yeah. it, it has a shelf life. <laughs> yeah, I'm like what the? Who's been hiding this? So. 
Julian, you wanted to talk about birth dates. I did. I th- you know, silly me. I thought it would be a good subject, but it puts me on the spot to talk about mine. I don't really want to talk about mine. I'm kind of shy. But I, f- I was hoping well, what made you we could talk about a little that? bit. Well, what made you think about it? I don't know because it's your birthday, but what what was the thought behind behind well, uh I'm going I've gone through since the, the turning of the hour of my birthday at midnight, been going through a lot of processing today. I'm just like there's something going on and it wasn't because I decided to do stuff on my birthday. Like since midnight, I've only gotten a, a little less than 2 hours of sleep. And um, every moment's been filled with significance, and um, it's like wow, I'm I'm going through so much. It's like my own new birth birthing stage, and um, it's just incredible because it's like you can't even plan for it, and it's just like why numerologically am I getting blasted? with new stuff today and why is it like showing up now i mean sure i put a little bit of intention out there that oh i'm gonna have a great birthday but i'm like wow i did not i did not see it coming in that heavy well i'm wondering if there's energy officially assigned to it and you know numerology i know you know that and maybe there's some data there that might help I I think that before I even talk about the numerology, which is just um, is is watching the the frequencies, you know, the time frequencies that the individual functions within that contributes to the collective reality, the collective calendar. I mean, at this point, I want to look at the collective calendar just for a moment and say, you know, all of us have been working really, really hard. At the beginning of our conversation, we were talking about how the summer has been it's been it's been pretty big for most of us who who have responded to the higher frequency downloads who've, who've been responding with um self self responsibility you know understanding that it's themselves that are that are the creator et cetera with you know mm-hmm. those who are starting to catch on to this and and in the same wave you know it's starting to emanate out and we're seeing it in the outer reality so maybe Maybe your yes, maybe neurologically your frequencies, the frequencies will open you up, open, bring you opportunities. They bring you a ripeness, a readiness for a particular, a particular lesson or slash expansion. You know, um, so combined with what's happening right now, with the you know the the double uh, astrological indicators of the you know what we've been what we've been opening ourselves up to. I think that this time of year right now, maybe it's happening for lots of people who are having birthdays right now, but I don't know what your other numbers are because if you're having a number, if you're you're just entering um, an annual cycle, your birthday is an annual cycle, if you're entering an annual cycle that that coincides with your your life path number Mm -hmm. particularly or your birthday, number then um it would it would feel big it would feel like whoa i'm waking up yeah. big, you know my eyeballs are just like i'm really having an energy surge in another direction well so, i have uh i have three numbers like if i could chalk it up to specifically i would use nine seven and five in that order and that is my that those are the numbers i see everywhere specifically nine seven five and sometimes it's just nine seven, sometimes it's just seven five, but I'm it's like a really big hit for me. A lot of people get you know one 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 or four ones or whatever. I get mm-hmm. nine seven five left and right, mm-hmm. and it's a moment. It's a moment for me to take notice of. That's right. That's right. That's what it is. When you're seeing repeating numbers, doesn't matter what the number is. You don't have to know what the number represents as far as energy frequency. But I've, just- e- I've even moved into like apartments and houses that are like. Almost exactly that configuration. Why do I keep moving into a house with a nine, seven, and a five in it? And you know, I'm, I don't you know? know. Again, I don't know what your core numbers are, but I'll bet there's a nine, a seven, and a five in there. <laughs> <I'll> yeah. <bet laughs> um, and I mean, if you take just the birthdays uh, and add, like, you know, like um, my wife's birthday is on the 18th. That's a nine, and then both me and my daughters are sevens. And my youngest daughter is a five. 
So I kind of see that there, mm -hmm. but you know, I feel like that's like I feel like that's like trivial numerology. <laughs> so, right. Well, you're in a four personal year, and you're heading into a five personal year, which means uh, things things are going to get really busy for you. This as far as um, wait a second, uh, that's already started. <laughs> oh yeah, it, but it's gonna 2014. I mean, it starts in October. Or actually, you're gonna start to it, no, the lie. That's a lie. It actually you can feel the energies surfacing in July. Anybody who's sensitive to energy can start feeling the opportunities coming in July. But in October, it'll be a five personal month for you. And so it'll give you a little bit of a taste of what 2014 is going to hold in store for you. Now, five is all about, it's all about expansion. It's about demanding expansion. There's no way you're not going to expand fast. And it's going to come through lots of opportunities, rapid fire, lots of information, big information. Okay. Yeah, and um, lots of new That's friends. About right. New friends, <laughs> new new and unusual friends that will stimulate the expansion. And so five kind of creates cracks in old belief systems, big cracks, where you you can't hold you can't hold it anymore. You have to because following that is six, where you have to find some sort of stability, you have to find some sort of balance so that you can make a decision of what you're actually going to create. So you're heading into a five year, but you're um what year are you born, my friend? Seventy eight. So I'm thirty five today. 15, 10, 25, 7, there's another seven, seven, fourteen, five, and you're a five. And you're a five. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. What did I say? You are entering okay. you, you're entering a year that is that is your core number. So the wind is in your sails. The wind is in your sails. So you're you're not there will be no moss growing underneath your feet. All right. Hear that everybody, I'm coming. Yeah, you're going to be a rolling oh, stone, man. <laughs> you know? So, yeah. Yeah, that's exciting. You know, when when five is not oh, bad. Oh, freaking kidding, yeah. It, it's very also, Julian, on your birthday, when, you, when you're born, you're imprinted with a – you're imprinted because you're moving out of a morphogenetic field of your mother into the, gen, you know, morphogenetic field of the earth. So there's a energy pattern that you're imprinted with on your birth. And when you have your birthday, when you get close to that original birthing pattern, there's a personal portal activation that happens. Oh, that's, yeah. I, okay. I totally feel that. <clears throat> and exactly. Oh. You know, on your personal portal activation, that's why it's a good time to make a quote-unquote birthday wish on your birthday. Ooh. Well, I'd like to do it as a group if you guys would join me at my actual birth time that I know coming up here in about... Well, ten minutes past the hour. Okay. That'll be fun. Okay. Yeah, that'll be fun. Let's try not let's try to keep aware we don't miss that. Be good. Who's got a Who's got a phone? Set the alarm. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. This is going to be a fun year for you. I'm. Mean, that's exciting. That's exciting. <laughs> when when you oh, have yeah. especially fives because fives so are if, all about partying. If it's, if it's going to be exciting. It is. And I've already been, like, super stoked and excited already. What does that mean? Well, yeah. <laughs> you know, like my shoes knocked off. <laughs> it, it, yeah, kind of like that. Yeah, <laughs> like that. Kind of like that. Expansion so fast. Now, look, if you feel like you're flying so fast, you you almost can't handle it. And I'm not I'm not saying that that's going to happen, but sometimes, you know, we, we eat so much in a five opportunity, but you're a five. You can pretty much handle it. You can't sit still. You're always doing something. Your mind is always going. You're always trying to figure out why. You're always puttering, right? <laughs> always moving around. So, you know, when you put an, an added opportunity for you to be exactly who you are, you know, you're a five. Uh, you can go up to my website and just kind of read the general on that. You're, you know, these, these are exciting people. These are people who like a lot of stimulation coming from a lot of directions all at one time. They can handle it. You have a seven. Your um, your maturity, your, your spiritual second second layer, the backup for your spiritual number, which is a five. That's your life path number. Is a seven, which means you think about everything. You want to analyze everything. You want to know more. You're more. You're psychic. You are psychic. Uh, the occult is is where you really want to be. Um, in, I thought it was just by being a Virgo, I was like that. Um, well, this is just another way to translate. 
astrology. Okay. It's just a okay. different language system. So numerology and astrology will often come to the same conclusions, the same timing oh. events. I just use a different, I use a much more s- a simple language system. Um, you know, you can use your digits on your hands and toes to, to you know, to add up your numbers. <laughs> and uh-huh. all if you remember the basics of the nine digits and live them, you know, watch them and live them, it, they it, they expand quite quite a lot. The meanings and the experiences that these these frequencies represented by a digit, the symbol of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and zero. Zeros are kind of uh, important when we stick them in there. They mean um, magnification or an emphasis of the energy that's right behind it or before it. Mm. So if you see it, yeah, 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 yeah. it's it's really, it's very simple. I mean, it's really simple. Anybody who's listening who wants to uh, mess around with your numbers, you can go to theempressoftime.blogspot.com or thenumbersintime.blogspot.com. They're both connected. Uh, the Empress of Time is a global um, a portal with information of upliftment there, and the numbers and time is specific to numerology and figuring out your numbers and just poking around and having some fun with that. Anybody has a question, I will be happy to answer. Just email me. Oh, cool. Yeah. I'm always one wonderfully happy when people call to talk about this, you know. So, uh, so yeah, you're, you're, you're getting ready to rock and roll at big time. <laughs> you think you were having fun before? I you? thought I was a rock. No, you, <laughs> wait, this next nine years is going to go bazam. Really, you have you're entering a whole new nine year cycle. If you stay in time, Julian, you may not choose to stay in time. You know, the expansion, the opportunity for exp- expansion, always takes you to the next level. Always takes you to the next level, and you've already got one foot in there. Right. So right, so you know, you may not, you may choose to figure out a way to get out of time and. And have way more control over that. God, I, did, I just, it's going to sound so cheesy, but you kind of remind me of like when Neil goes to the Oracle. <laughs> that feeling, you're just like, oh man. <laughs> Not that I'm trying to superimpose anything there, it's just no, that kind of feeling that from that part in the movie. Yeah. Like, oh well, man. So recently I watched that, and it was really funny. I watched that scene, and I, you know, you've seen it before, and you've seen it, before, right? You've gone backwards. You saw it the first time, and you had no idea what the hell was going on, right? Yeah. Then when you went back and watched it again, you saw something a little bit different in that that particular scene. And you can use any oracle that will question what you believe. Mm-hmm. So and give and and kind of like turn it back into your hands so that you can be the creator. You can decipher that, and you can be the creator with that, you know, with that bit of information. Um, but the opportunity, all time is, is an opportunity to grow. It's really all it is. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when we get all permission, hate, I, almost from an outside source, which is rare. So, so I don't understand how this mechanism. I don't know who the time lords are. I don't know who designed this particular uh, platform, the time platform. And I know that there are other timelines and time platforms that go on in other universes and galaxies, etc. And I am, um, I'm curious. Someday I'll get to know about all of that. But this was really kind of natural for me to start watching this. I could, I started to see it relatively young. Um, the cyclic. Um, as I'm a, astrologically, I'm a Cancerian, and the moon cycles were always interesting to me. And then from there, I said, "Well, w- what about presence?" You know. And then, then numerology kind of fell in my lap. So it was. It's been a, a fun little tool to use. I don't use it as a religion or anything like that. But when I see something, I can tell you exactly what frequency. Is it, I can see, I see people who are sixes, I see people who are fours, I, and they archetypically mm-hmm. will display the basic, the rudimentary, you know, behaviors and uh, habits and beliefs and um, and stodginess, you know, because every, every everything is 365 degrees. You got everything has a has a full spectrum, but until you have an ex- like tarot cards. Each each card has 365 degrees. Depends on on what you what what's next to it and who you're talking to. Mm. And so and you know if you want to really learn tarot or numerology or astrology, you have to kind of play with it first thing in the morning. 
and then, you know, like draw some cards or look at your chart or look at your numbers and then, you know, write it down, you know, pull some cards, write it down and go away for the day. And then at night before you retire, look at those cards again. Think about what you did and look at those cards again. And that's how you learn. You come back with experience. Um, so numerology is experiential. You can read the basics that I have up on the lo- up online, and and those are accurate. But they're just they're just the very bottom line. It's up to you to have an experience and then look at those words and go, you know, like like the oracle. Aha! Now I know what she was saying. You know. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. hey guys, we have Jerry on the line. She wanted to say something. Hey Jerry. Jerry, are you there? Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi there. Hi there. Hi there. I just popped in and I saw you all heard you all chatting and I thought I would say hello and I I what I want to say is that I really appreciate all of you just so very much for sharing so much because uh-huh. for me you've all um shared so much of yourselves and it's helped me really see what I have and to help me grow. And it's just incredible. Um, Bob and Julian, it was your show I called in the very first time I ever called in to any of the shows. And um, you were just so um, welcoming and kind. And uh-huh. it was just so lovely to connect. And I'm just like feeling just so grateful at the moment. And I just wanted to tell you all. Aww. Thank you, Jerry. <laughs> and, and, and you too. <laughs> Yeah, I know you too, Tom, as well, because you've been such a great energy since you and I met, and it's just incredible. But I've noticed, and the trip I just was lucky enough to be able to go on, now I'm to Carolina, and again, you know, I, I felt just being in that energy with all those wonderful people, I've grown again, and, you know, I've been able to let go of a few sort of stuck beliefs, and, you know, it's really liberating to start to feel, and I just think, I mean, I was going to ask you, is it the energy that really is changing that, you know, more and more of us are being able to start to, to see things differently and, and realize that we don't have to stick to... I mean, my, my example is, you know, I've been somebody that's always been very sort of particular about spelling things correctly. And I, mm-hmm. it really has been, over the last few years, bugging me that people, also, uh, when they, they're trying to say you are and they use Y-O-U-R instead of Y-O-U-P-R-E, those sort of little things... And it's really mm-hmm. bothered me, but now I'm like, do you know what? It doesn't matter. I've, just, I've been taught that's correct, but why do we have to be correct? Can't we just be ourselves and express ourselves and let other people express themselves? And if we understand them, that's fine. So I'm just trying mm-hmm. to feel that I don't have to be stuck in any beliefs at all. Mhm. 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 I like. I like to actually make up words. Oh well, <laughs> you so do <laughs> Yeah. Did you hear about, did you hear about inflowment? Inflowment. Yeah. Nice. I like it. I um I was thinking, you know, a lot of the um well, you know, I remember, I remember uh, I think it maybe was Heather and Dee were talking and, and you know, people are calling the whole one people thing a movement and they don't like that at all. And I'm like, yeah, okay, we don't like that. But what is it? Well I'm trying to explain to somebody what is it? And I sat down specifically in my little thinking place where I sit and I'm like, Oh, what is it then? What can I say to people? What am I? I'm not even a group, yes, but I'm in a movement. But no, we're not the movement. So what the flipping neck are we? And uh-huh. I'm like, it's an inflowment. We're just flowing into who we are, and we're flowing forward into um, harmony and balance. And we're just we're in flowment. Uh-huh. And I wrote a little poem about it as well because it, it was just. It just struck me as, and, and everybody, and everybody was using it uh, at the weekend when we were there. We're, we're, we're <laughs> moment here, aren't we? And we're like, yes, we're in moment. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm stepping out of some boxes for myself, which is which is really exciting. I mean, I have been stepping out of lots of boxes for quite a while, and I found myself having been in um, this allowed myself to lose who I really am and, and actually live a life of the opposite of who I am and I was this dependent person who was quiet and did as she was told and conformed to everything I was told and now I'm back to like I'm not going to conform to anything and I'm not going to do as somebody tells me I'll do it if I want to but I'm not going to mm-hmm. do something somebody tells me to do 
Mm-hmm. So it's just so exciting to be here here right now. So well, the energy that we're in right now, and it's 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 an it's an amazing place to be. A lot of people, you know, for a lot of people who are still, you know, trapped in the matrix, they may not notice externally a lot of what's going on, but they are definitely feeling it internally. Everyone. And I don't even care what level of awareness or awakeness that you are. Yeah. Every human being on the planet is feeling it. Feeling it. Yeah. They may I, not be able to explain it. They may not be able to, you know, uh, elucidate it in in ways that someone who is consciously aware. Mm-hmm. But they are definitely feeling this this new, and it's it's pushing it's pushing their buttons. It's pushing mm-hmm. them. It's pushing them into experiences that require them to make decisions <laughs> and to 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 basically move mm. their position and their perspective on things. Yeah. And oh. it doesn't yeah. matter, you know, if they don't get it right the first time cuz in 15 minutes it's going to come back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's going to come back and it's going to hit them again. You know, and this is this is what people are experiencing. Mm. On on various different levels, but yeah. I, I tell you, it's it's the perfect place to be in where we are in the time stream because we're we're at the last station. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we've, we 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 literally we've just pulled in to the last stop. You know, the <laughs> yeah. doors are opening. <laughs> you know, and people are. We've been on the train for so long. You know, people are kind of milling about. It's like oh. Are, are we here? We're, we're, <laughs> are we, we're there yet. <laughs> it was nearly there. It was so nearly there. Uh, brilliant. But even I, my, I've noticed actually had a conversation with my husband this morning, and he's he sort of he gets some of this, and he he listens to me. But I've noticed today was talking. I, I, you know, I I, ta- I gave him the um, example about trying to explain that like, you know that we're the value and the money's not because he's from Jamaica and he's been like on the breadline all his life. And now he's earning money. He's saving it and all of that sort of thing. But he even, um, I I told him the uh, uh, the, the, the sort of analogy when you say, right, okay, you're on a desert island and somebody offers you a big chest of of, uh, dollar bills or another person, which would you take? And he totally gets that, that the person is the the value, not the notes, because the notes are useless on a desert island. And he was saying today, he was talking to his friend in Jamaica, and his friend in Jamaica was on and on about money, and I need money, and money's my friend, and this, that, and the other. And, and, and Otis, my husband, had started saying to him, well, no, actually, you know, money's not your friend. Money's just something that you use. And it's taken me a long time to get any of that through to him, but he was saying, he's saying it's his friend now. Mm. And that's really because you can tell us, you know, money, I need money. Oh, you know, boy. It's what I need. And it's all, you know, it's all about the money. And that he's only going to work it, a, a job if he gets money. And I'm like, I've been sort of quietly just putting these little seeds in. And now he's starting to say it himself. And that's like huge from him. It's wonderful. That's wonderful. Uh, my, my, my father used to always yell at me and say, money doesn't grow on trees. And I would say, well, right. actually, it, it it actually does, doesn't it? I mean, it's paper. <laughs> <laughs> it literally actually does that. It grows on trees. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's all of it. It's, and, and he agrees with me when I say, just look around, see how much abundance is. Go into one shop. How much stuff is one shop? This is one shop in the whole of America, let alone the whole of the world. Look how much stuff there is around you. It's just limitless stuff. stuff. And right. It's just and we we all have not enough money to go and get this stuff. But when we have stuff, that bloody um, that skit the other day on the on the giggle show about the stuff and it was just so true you go and buy more stuff but then look how much stuff there is <laughs> and there's just so much stuff in this world I'm like, how do you create this much stuff because there's just an abundance of fucking stuff <laughs> <laughs> and then yet we're all on the poverty line and the ball and we have got no money haven't got enough money to buy this and that and the other but it's all there Mm-hmm. But I, I've been listening to George Cavastis, and I tell you, I am just like, okay, this just explains everything to me. I completely, uh, the way he describes everything and how everything's going on out there in the realms, 
and I'm like, okay, it just, there's just, it's just it just makes so much sense. And I, I'm just like, you know what? It's all going to come around because it's all in the the whole, is this a game? The whole thing is a game. A um, game. There's no There's no wrong and no right and no good and no bad. Everything is just perfect as we are learning our lessons and going along and growing and i feel the growth right now it's just exciting yeah. can i can i share something just on the on the word uh game i've i've used that word for a long time and i really liked it until i found out other people didn't like me using it so mm-hmm. i changed my word now is is the play oh, <laughs> the word play has been in my face for a week now everywhere i look the word play is there want to play let's play yeah. and i'm going yeah i do i do <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Whitney's been popping in and out. Let, let me let me get back to her. She's raised her hand again. Whitney, are you there? Hello? Whitney? But she's not there. Area code 406? Well, Julie, I just wanted to um, to mention that, you know, the only reason one would use tarot cards or or astrology or numerology or any of that is, is, is to kind of find a balanced, find a little guidance, you know, find a little validation for for what you already know, you know, what you're, yeah. all, what you're already doing, but it just kind of goes, you know, it's just a little, it's, it's validation often enough, you know. Which is... I've noticed a, a, a certain kind of grounding too, because you feel you can use that and move forward. Right. You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna pull out of time, you don't need any of those things. It doesn't matter. You know, you you go with you go with your gut, you go with your heart, you go where the flow is t- the fl- in flow is taking you. Know, <laughs> you know, but hello, she back. Hi. Oh, yeah. There you are. Is that Whitney? Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hi. I'm here. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Is it almost ten after? Hello. Uh, Hello. Three minutes. Two minutes. Are, are we having oh. technical difficulties there, Whitney? Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. Hello. Hello. Can Can, can you, you hear, hear us? I can hear you. And then we're hearing yes. each other fine. Woohoo! We're uh, we're having uh, so we got the whole group together, but they're listening uh, off the computer, and there's like a you know like a minute time lag. Oh, I see. Uh, or mm. thirty seconds, you know, between the computer and the phone. Got it. Yeah, we um, we just joined by uh, Joan Bird, who has written a book about Montana UFOs, and she just uh, joined us. Mm. She's gonna hang out with us for a little bit. Welcome, John. She'll say hi in about uh, two minutes. Her well, minute. Julian, you, you, you've got you've got like about a minute. Do you want to let us know what your intention is for this year? Um, yeah. Or do you want to wait I, until? No, my birthday wish. I'll begin describing it. It's been slowly coming up into my awareness. I didn't know I had this birthday wish until I sort of channeled myself a little bit. My my birthday wish was that I get to feel more. Feel my environment, feel people more, and feel the energies more, and just increase my access to the knowing of all energy that is it able to be experienced? Because what that does for me is it feels like I'm gifting myself more Lego pieces to my total Lego collection. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> and I like to play. Wow. So that's you know, my wish. You know what they say, Julian? Be careful what you wish for. Oh. <laughs> it's coming. Oh. <laughs> it's coming. I feel good with that one. Thank you for being present with me while I shared that. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Julie. Thank you. <laughs> I wish I had a, a happy birthday song queued in the in the studio. We'd play it for you. Well, we can make it yeah. up. Go ahead. It's already. 
What's I'm sorry, you, you, I didn't catch that. Whitney? Is it on? <laughs> yes, it's on. Are you ready? One, yes, we are. Two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Birthday two days ago, and Vegas here that had a birthday yesterday. Oh my goodness! Uh, oh, wonderful. And, uh, and Heather and her husband Richard are on their honeymoon. Uh, awesome! <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, how special is that? Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> I I only met someone. Um, yeah. Uh, one of my friends that lives not too far from here, about three hours north up in Canada, his birthday was yesterday. And we were fast friends even before we knew each other's birthday. Like, hmm, that's cool. Got some September people. I mean, for a while, I was a little depressed that the 9-11 stuff had to happen after my birthday. But in the end, I love September still the most. Yeah, it's not quite hot summer, and it's not quite winter fall. Yeah. It's, it's mm-hmm. perfect in the middle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> We've had perfect weather out here, and, uh, oh, yeah, it's been absolutely fantastic. Great star show last night. It was beautiful. Mm. Does anybody, I mean, do you, do you want uh, anybody to talk about their experience? or? or Please what do. You think about, oh, yeah. Does anybody want to talk about their experience? Oh, I said that, and they all dogged out. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I will tell you what my experience is. Um, I have been coming up to this hot springs for a year, and before that, I was going up to hot springs for a year before that, and I found this place and fell in love with it, and everybody here just got to come, and they are enjoying my favorite experience. Mm. What a gift is that, you know? It's a good feeling, yeah. That's awesome. Oh. Yeah. And uh, we trekked off in three cars today to the Buddhist temple, and it was just extremely powerful. We actually had people join us. We just decided to do uh, the meditation silently, and we kind of made maybe, I don't know, we're maybe a quarter of the circle around the um, stupa. And we had people join us. There was a peace festival going on, and, and I was imagining the whole time that the whole circle was filled with people, but everybody got really quiet, and I don't know, it was probably a 15-minute meditation, but I really felt the energies ground down into that area. And the, the on the stupa is um, Buddha's mother. What is her name? Jinmo. So mm. that's what the shrine is uh, at the, this place. And it's been blessed by the Dalai Lama in 2008. Or will be. So the the energy work, it would be kind of interesting if Julian could uh, tap into maybe finding out what's going on with the energy work that we're doing on these ley lines. That would be really cool. <laughs> um, I can, actually. Just give me one, one I'm second. Gonna, I'm going to just put me here to on the speaker because everybody's trying to hear off my phone right now, okay? So I'll just mute out. <clears throat> um, the visual I'm getting right now is an aurora borealis sort of effect, but on the ground, and extending upwards, sort of like a shimmery wall. It's a, not too zigzaggy like like the aurora borealis, but that's the visual I'm getting. And then the trees uh, and the surroundings are sort of like reaching over, wanting to touch it, sort of like bending over to want to feel it. And it's a little bit like... Um, an inverted gust of wind. Sort of, sort of like a sucking wind sort of feel. And um, I feel that as people are standing there, they're just like standing in like the light of the sun, like within sunlight rather than in the shadows. And they're just sort of like soaking there. 
and it's it's growing. It's like uh, it's like some kind of like you know when you have like an earthquake and the earth opens up and there's like a crack. It kind of feels like that. It sort of looks a little bit like that. It's very very green, very very green uh, light. Um, some blue and a little bit of purple and a little bit of of yellow orange, but it's mostly green, shimmery uh, color light. That's what the, I don't know where that leads to or what that means going into the future, but um, it's like a a Gaia kiss sort of feel for me. If Gaia could kiss someone, he. It it would be Gaia kissing those in in that space, or opening up her mouth to kiss someone, something like that. Wow. It's really quite cool. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> what colors do you? Well, see? For you. Oh, it's you very have... green. It's like very green, glowy light, like uh, like a, like I say, it's, it's like this aurora borealis looking thing, but on land. Like it's in in the middle of the space and goes for I can't tell how far it goes. It goes to as far as you can see, really. Um, but there's lots of like hills and obstacles. So you can't see it go very far. But yeah, it's like a glowy green light. Like this is gonna sound cheesy, but like lightsaber green light. Bright green. But, lightsaber green. Yeah, <laughs> Star Wars green lightsaber light. Electric green. Yeah, yes. Mm-hmm. It's very flowy. It's very uh, oh, yeah. shimmery. Yeah. So, um, is, is there any note from your Palladian friends about what's, what's going on here? That it, do they have anything uh, to offer? I haven't asked offer? them. That was just myself. I can see I, what, what they're looking for. That was a hot <laughs> Everybody is hanging on every word. It's awesome. They um, are actually observing everything that's going on through every animal in the space. They've sort of like radioed in, uh, and they do that a lot. I'm finding out now as as I'm bringing this up. Uh, they will ask the animal kingdom for eyes, eyes on the ground, and um, and they'll follow through the experiences. So every squirrel, rabbit. Dog, bird, insect, they're all cameras on the space, I feel, right now. They they use blackbirds and crows a lot. (laughs) Pleiadians do? Yes. Well, they're probably really one of their favorites, I suppose, but I I get this feeling that they're constantly in observation of high energy moments. I mean, they're, that's what they do. They hone in on that stuff, like, like, you know, dropping a piece of bread that's buttered side down, you know? I like, guess you can't. You just got to just accept it. Because they're going to be finding a way to observe it while not uh, breaking any rules. That's really can you, interesting. Can you, can you ask them to come visit us tonight? You do that. Doesn't They hear you through me, and they hear you through you being in the environment that they have like their own little mic set up on. So your energetic desires, as a group especially, hold hands if you're going to do it, do a circle, and and look up, look at each other, feel that you're all in union on the desire, and then look up, and take some time doing that, and recenter when you start to begin to feel you have doubts or something like that. You look at each other, you squeeze each other's hands, and then look back up again. That's what I would be doing. There's an airplane. We all got excited. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, if the energetic desire is there and if the space is uh, compatible, then what they're compatible with can respond to it. And um, is it dark yet there? No. It's not dark yet. No. We still have about three um, hours yeah, or four hours. Um, it, it'll be easier to see things in the dark because um, simply their their crafts tend to actually have their own, for me, their own light 
almost like just outside the spectrum, but within, but within the within the visible spectrum sometimes, and sometimes not. I've noticed that I see ships that no one else sees, but that's just kind of how I see things. I see light energy that other people don't see right away, and um, that I feel is the best opportunity. And hopefully, you're all familiar with um, what you're looking at when you're looking up, like the difference between a meteor and a satellite and, you know, planes and things like that. Um, if you do get some movement with a light particle in, in uh, you know, above you, uh, unify uh, your intentions as a group. You can say it out loud. Ask for it to do like a little U-turn or a curve, which satellites won't do. Satellites will go on and off based on their orientation of reflecting the sun in the atmosphere. But they'll only show up for a part of the night. After that point, they'll be just nowhere near the sun's ability to, to catch them. So they'll be at the beginning of the night and at the end of the night. You'll see satellites. And um, But yeah, it's up to you if you have some binoculars to scan and pan. Sometimes um, I feel like you could even choose where you want them to show up. But for the most part, it's going to be where everyone's putting their focus. When you when humans put focus, I can see it, <coughs> especially in groups. <coughs> Excuse me. But there's almost like a, a a light beam, like a flashlight coming out of people's eyes, and they can they can see that that presence of your awareness. So they kind of have an idea of of where to show up and what to hide from. So hopefully that helps you guys tonight. Oh, it's going to be fantastic. Everybody says thank you. What, uh, is there anything you're picking? I'm just picking your brain because you're here, right? Is there anything that we can do be doing for this ley line, for this energy vortex that needs to be done? Do you, can you tell that? Um, this is going to sound weird, but I want I want you to do this. And when I say I want you to do this, I mean like, a deep part of me feels this, is to pour water through your cupped hands and uh, carry it across the area and let the water pour through your hands and know that you are giving yourself to this and your energy through your hands and it, and it pours slowly into the earth and you just keep that focus that you are watering it with your pure energy of who you are and that you're gifting it with the opportunity of, of opening up an awakening in that space. Um, if you want a visual, imagine the feeling of Christmas morning where you're opening up a present and you're pulling the ribbons and you're pulling the, the wrapping paper off. It's not about what's inside. It's about the process of the excitement of energy developing and, and the unraveling. And do that while you're holding the water in your hands and allowing it to drip through. You could do that over and over again. Everybody can do that. You might I have think to get that some this help. whole place will get water. water <laughs> yeah? You might have to get someone's help to pour water into your hands if you want to use both hands to cup it. But that, that really, hmm, I, that's exactly what I would be doing if I was in your place. We're all for it. Okay. Hopefully. We're going to do that. Excellent. Excellent. Tell me how it goes. Tell me what your experiences are like. You get that? Drop that on my space. Okay. Yeah, we'll post a post. Thank you. The energy here is—it's really fantastic. Did you want? Are you wanting still to do the meditation, or I I can? I don't think we have any more questions right now. Well, yeah, we we're all thinking about getting water out. Like, I'm gonna. I, I told Julian and uh, and Carmel that I, I would attempt to try and, and put into words uh, the energy that we're in right now. So I'm gonna pose that question as we go into the meditation, and we'll see what comes out. Hmm. Let's do that. Okay. Sounds very good. And then whatever time we have left, if there's 
uh, any questions or anybody is uh, uh, awake enough to, uh, to to talk about what they experienced during the meditation. Because uh, I'm interested in finding out what comes out too. Mm. Things uh, kind of take a life of their own. So, well, be careful. I'm sensitive today. To this sort of stuff. I know. Like really sensitive. <laughs> Let's see. Um, I guess we can start any time. Let me find the music. Okay. Are we ready? Yes. Whitney, are you ready? She doesn't have to answer. I- I'm assuming that you are. <laughs> so let's just get started. If everyone can find a comfortable spot, you can just relax, lie down, or sit back in your chair. And let's focus on our breathing. Breathing deeply in your nose and out of your mouth. As you focus on your breathing, I want you to imagine that each breath that you take is breathing in energy that is calming, soothing, and relaxing. Feel the energy enter not only into your lungs, but through every pore of your body with each breath that you take. Feel it relaxing your muscles tension in your in your neck in your shoulders the stress in your back your arms your legs and as the energy clears out all of the stresses and entanglements that were there you feel the breathing coming from your heart space a warmthness that begins there and radiates out of your body. And I want you to move into that warm, comfortable space of your heart. We are all now here gathered, and there are many of us here. We've come to this place in this time, in this moment of now, to enjoy one another's company. For in the gathering that you are doing, whether you are connected by the internet or radio waves through your phone, We are all gathering together, for there is a celebration that we are preparing for. In each of these gatherings, we want you to know that what you are doing is magnificent. It is beautiful. You are stepping forward as the first ones to partake the first ones to say yes to accept this new gift that is being born in the earth right now. For in the energies that are pouring out into you are all the answers to everything that has beforehand caused you to hold still. In the gathering, you are creating and rebirthing magic And this magical field that you bring forth, this magical energy, will allow for miracles to take place. Expect it. Know it. For there's so many things that you are capable of when you gather together. It is not an accident. It is not a chance thing that all the masters said. When you gather together, two or more... 
such wondrous things can be accomplished because when you gather two or more many gather with you all of the beings that were you in your past and in your future are there now to join you in this present now to imbue to you all of their wisdom and their knowledge for you in this moment of now all that you need is being given and offered to you freely if you choose to accept it for it is always a matter of choice and your choice is always respected so whatever it is you choose in this moment of now understand it is so you are reconnecting with family journeys that you have started millennia ago and you agreed that you would not forget one another no you would not forget one another you would come back together at a certain point in time that you would remind each other of who you are that you would be there for one another and you would be able to feel the love of home once again it is a beautiful thing Understand that in this period of time that we are moving into, it is all about your doing. It is the unwritten book that you are beginning to set the pen to page right now. You are beginning to write your own stories. You are beginning to write your own futures. For up until this point of now, it has already been prearranged for you. And now you are willing to take the pen to author your own journey. And it is a beautiful thing to stand in new power. It is a beautiful thing to take the reins and to take the responsibility of what happens next. When you ask this question, what is happening next? Where are we going for? What's, what's in store for us? You will find that we will ask the same question. What's in store for us? For you have the pen in your hand. You are the ones that are writing this story. This amazing conclusion. Understand that all that you do from this moment on will be of your choice of your choosing whether it be that you choose to relax and just enjoy the next few years or whether it is that you have some burning passion all of it is available to you right now this is the gift this is the gift that is offered to you make a wish make a good one and this gift is not only contained just for you but you can share this gift with any who you choose it is yours freely and the more that you give of this gift the more of it you will receive the earth is birthing the new human and it is being birthed in an energy pattern that you have raised your hand to accept and this energy pattern is integrating into your hearts into your cells into your bodies right now as you gather together no matter how it is you choose to do so in your dreams in your meditations in your groups it is changing you internally. You are helping one another to write each other's codes, to align one another to the absolute. And from this time forward, your lives will never be the same. You are entering into a period of magic. All the stories you heard of old become commonplace in the here and now 
¿Qué te pasa? There are many who wish to congratulate you. Many who thought that you would never make it to this point. Who are in awe and wonder at what you're doing. For it is a time to celebrate. It is a time to rejoice. It is a time of such wondrous, wondrous happiness. For you are graduating, my brothers and sisters. You are graduating, and your certificates of accomplishment are prepared and ready for you. You just need but raise your hand to accept it. To accept the mantle that you have worked for. To accept the mantle of your true divinity. Your true power. It is yours for the taking. And it has always been yours. And we give it to you with all of our approval. For a job well done. As you go forth in your daily lives, share this gift with all who you choose. For it will be a gift that will be shared amongst the whole world. No one should be without this light. This light that is now burning forever within you. Let it shine. back? Mm, not quite. <clears throat> Almost. Mm. There was a lot of release there. Thank you, Bob. Yes, there was. Thank you, Bob. Yeah. You're or welcome. whoever was saying those words. It's all coming from us. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was in the last download that I got in it was, you know, I had mentioned before that I kept, I saw this big, huge wall of energy, and I kept asking what it was, and I kept getting this wink. <laughs> <laughs> and now I understand what the wink was all about. It was, it was me, it, it, me <laughs> winking at myself, like, yeah, guess who? <laughs> <laughs> and all of us, all of us are there. <laughs> Julian, you're there. Ev- all of us are there, in that future place. And we've I, all, I, we, we're all creating reality. We're all doing uh, amazing things, and we're sending messages back to ourselves. Reminders, yeah. if you will. I've, I've seen that. Uh, I call it the event horizon energy. Mm. It, hasn't, it hasn't coalesced into physical definition yet. It's just light. Mm. And, um, and it's, it's pure consciousness, really. Pure consciousness in wave form rather than particle form. And uh, sometimes when I look at people, I see that that is really close to them, which makes me feel that, you know, their projections into their future is really, you know, not that far out or something. Well, I really like that word magic. Yeah. Because you know what? That's what it's been since we got back from Morocco. That's what it's been like. It's been magical. Like magic stuff happens all the time. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. I've been feeling it um, since I sort of pointed out that the calendar has sort of started over for me, like a new calendar date. Have you heard me mention that before? Um, I started uh, not this uh, last Sunday, but basically the the calendar I felt it started over at like one. 
like about two weeks, <laughs> about two day, about two weeks ago. It was like this is this is day one. I don't know why, but this is day one, and everything is different now. And I never wanted to ever commit to saying that. Because I had nothing around me to validate that. You know like, what? That outside. corresponds. That corresponds with so many people that that have been saying the same thing. Because Bashar says that 2013, we will count as the first year of civilization. Mm. That anything before that period of time, we'll look back at and says, "Oh yeah, that's when we were barbarians." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That 2013 would mark the beginning of of the the new world. Yeah. So, year one, here year we one. are. Well, I, I was even going so far as saying day one. Day one. Day one was two weeks ago on Sunday. And everything from that point forward, for me and what I've been experiencing around me in the field and what I've discovered in other people's lives is that manifestation reality just... Lifted to a whole new level. Uh huh. Um, yeah, yeah. And it's just been, I mean, easier and more. It's like a bigger roller coaster. It's like uh, more dramatic for for all for all cases of purposes. So the contrast also got bigger too. But in but, the end, it still feels like. A fun roller coaster that we're getting on because roller coasters are fun. That sort of thing. Time to play. Time to play. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, this is this is this is the thing we get to we get to write our our own story. We get to we get to write down what it is we choose to to move into. Hmm. I've been having uh, dream sessions with friends, which has been really wonderful. Just been so much fun. Spending time searching our dreams, researching our dreams online, looking for things and sharing, looking for opportunities and sharing. It's been really fun to do that. And time just, well, you know, you pull out of time when you're in that absorption. You know, wow, we've been doing this for like three hours? Yeah. Hey, Whitney and Jerry, are, are you guys still alive? Are you there? Your, your mics are still open. I'm sure oh, they're alive, Bob. I'm still here. I'm alive. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't hear me munching on my salad and chop me off. Oh. <laughs> I just had my dinner and it was very lovely. <laughs> that, was, that was you? <laughs> that was me munching, crunching away. <laughs> I, I've got the um, inflowment poem sitting here. Would you like to? Would you like to share that? Oh yeah, that was such, oh, yeah. that was so great. It was perfect. Yeah, let's it's, hear it. It's such if a you have it book. handy. I have it. I have it here where it was originally writ in my little notebook. This is perfect. the original writing inflowment. <clears throat> we have found ourselves in one wildly rare moment, where we are now experiencing the perfect inflowment. To all open minds, it has become clear that the shift we've been awaiting is indeed here. Love is the answer, we've all heard it said. This sort of quotation rolls round in one's head. But love is truly the answer, and it can heal all. Give love and receive it, and you will be well. Humanity's inflowment will help us find peace. or illness and dis-ease, this will release. It's time to be inflow. And to become content, boundlessness is natural when we reach in the moment. I like that. I like cool. that. And um, I've written wow, the, that is the, de- the definition so well. of a where I wrote this, um, Julian. I don't know if you heard this. Um, my definition is moving in one's flow, moving together in harmony, balance, and love, in balance and harmonious flow. So we're in a are, you go- uh, are, yeah. are you going to add that to Wikipedia for us? I think I should, shouldn't I? <laughs> I, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I even spotted it. Somebody was using it on Skype, somebody I don't even know. I'm like, hey, that's my word. Great. <laughs> it's 
cool. You should put it in there. You should put it in there because you have the definition all written out and everything. Yeah. Oh, I, I put that in because I, I posted it on Facebook. It's on. It's, I think it's on our um our spiral journey page too somewhere. And I actually you know wrote the definition in along with the poem. So, but it, it's definitely a nice word. So use away. Use away. <laughs> I'm really, I'm really glad I mentioned uh, making up words because words. you came, came up with just the one we needed to hear. There you go. <laughs> I'll probably keep going now. I'll be like, oh, let's make up another one. <laughs> yeah. Be fun. Well, Judy, we're... Go ahead. Oh, she's the wordsmith. I'd okay. yeah. love to hear, <laughs> hear what, what comes up. Mm, I've got a really lovely one here, actually, to share with you. Gratitude. Because that's what it's all about now, isn't it? The yes. more appreciation we give, um, the more, especially to our beloved Mother Earth, I mean, wow, what would we be without her? And, and when you stop and think what this planet really is, it's just like hard to even comprehend that we take it so much for granted until you become aware. And, oh, wow, it's just uh, huge. So I'm totally in, in, in complete appreciation. I've got a bit of a drama going on in my life now. I've got this house that I rent to tenants, and it's all a, a nightmare. But I'm like, you know what, it'll be all right. <laughs> I don't get upset about it anymore. I'm like, you know, it'll work out. <laughs> no more worries about it. So I'm just so grateful. Um, gratitude. Life is so good. Let's give thanks every day. Let's have some fun. Yeah, let's hop, skip, and play. Because this day and each one is made to enjoy, with all sorts of ideas of things to do, we can toy. So who makes you happy? Who makes you sad? Who makes you joyful and who makes you mad? Are you thinking of four, four people, of three or of two? Well, the one who is responsible for your feelings is you. Look toward everything and say to yourself, when I'm grateful and happy, it's good for my health. Yes, give thanks and be grateful for all that you have. And remember, we're here to give, love, and live. There you go. Mm -hmm. Thank you, awesome. Jerry. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. I just love sharing these, so thank you for letting me. <laughs> it's wonderful. And I really enjoy having you on the show when you bring, you bring your jolliness. Oh, you know, yeah. I love, love how jolliness. she delivers it, too. Yes. I like her <laughs> delivery. Yeah. yeah, it's just I, I, I guess this is just coming from my heart and that's why it comes that way because I just feel it and, and when I generate things from my heart it, it comes like you know, with heartfelt <laughs> so, Like butter on popcorn Oh <laughs> So <laughs> really smoothly, and yeah, I wrote this one for a magazine. Um, a, a local, ma a couple of girls locally have started up a local kind of organic magazine, and they asked me to write a, a poem from every month. And I said, "Well, just give me a topic." And they said, "Well, can you write something to do with gratitude?" And that's what rolled out. So, because so oh, many people right. don't realise they said, "So you know, who makes you happy? Who makes you sad? Who makes you joyful? And who makes you mad?" Well, nobody does. We we have choice about how we feel about everything. And once you recognise that. Your perspective completely changes, and you, know, you can't. You know, we have arguments with people, and you're like, "Well, you made me feel like I'm stupid or something." But no, you made yourself feel like you're stupid. You can't. Nobody can make you feel anything, and that's huge. When you recognise that, it, it, it's changed my world to realise that nobody can make me feel small or stupid or anything except myself. Right, allowing that, and we don't allow it anymore. Yeah, we allow we we allow expansion now. We allow the joy to come now. We're in our power. We, are, we allow the miracles and the magic to flow. I feel it. I know it, and all can see. There is no person stronger than me. You know that. That says it all. That one. Or it, it doesn't matter what people call you. Yes. People will call you names until yes. the end of time. It's, it's not like, what they call you. It's what you answer to. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like that. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> I like that a lot. <laughs> um, uh, right, you say somebody call you something that you don't enjoy. You could, I'm not listening. <laughs> yeah, that's not me. <laughs> you must not have me mistaken with someone else. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see myself like that at all. That must be you <laughs> referring to. <laughs> I'm sorry, the person to whom you are referring is not present. <laughs> <laughs> Please yeah. don't leave a message. 
Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> they don't bother, right? Yeah. <laughs> so that was wonderful. Thank you. Poems. P O M E. Oh, yeah. Poem. Poem by Jones. Poems yeah, I by Jones. I'm in my power. I feel it every minute of every hour. <laughs> I speak in verse now. You know, it was interesting. <laughs> Come well the other night um, when we were on our show and you guys were talking about something and I'm like, oh, that reminds me of something I wrote in one of my poems. And then out it comes. Yes. So I've always written yeah. a poem about something that everyone's talking about. Oh, that was in one of that. That was, that was in that poem. The good, the bad, the right, the wrong. I make it into sorts of songs. <laughs> Somebody was talking about... <laughs> oh, yeah, I wrote that one. <laughs> so it's all in there. It's all in there. So you guys are all going to get one of my books. I gave a book to everybody at the group in um, North Carolina, and uh, it was so lovely to share this inspirational work that I've done. And you know, everybody I, I meet and see, I, I like to just give the books to because it just gives me pleasure to share this message. And it was wonderful just to leave a little piece with everybody. So I want to, uh, you know, maybe Bob will come over and drive over and see you. I keep passing. I went. Oh, Bob. I was driving through Pennsylvania on my way to Carolina. And what, I started, where, where in Pennsylvania? Um, um, I was on 81, 84 on to 81. So I, 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 can, I can see Route 81 from my house. Okay. <laughs> well, on my way next time, I'll totally come and find you then. So I stop at this um, uh, gas station, and I, and I thought, oh, I'm in Pennsylvania. I've got to go find those chips that uh, Bob talked about. So go in there, and I'm, like, I'm sure I remember the name when I see them, but I, I couldn't. There was there was two brands there that were made in Pennsylvania. One was Martins, and the other was Utz. But I could, that was, neither of those rang a bell from the ones you described. Middlesworth. Oh, there you go. I knew it was. It had a W in it. <laughs> I go, <laughs> Middlesworth oh. potato chips. But they didn't have them then. They didn't have them because I looked, and I probably would have. I would probably would have noticed it if I'd. Um, I'm going to write this down. Yeah, so I'm going to look. Back to, uh, I'll say, Why don't you have Middlesworth chips? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, when I when I travel, I was so disappointed that the, no one else had. I thought right, everyone must know Middlesworth chips. You know, they're the most popular <laughs> chip, at least in my area, they, the yeah. single most popular potato chip that there is. Right. So, you know, I traveled to New York. It's like, there's no Middlesworth? Are you, yeah, exactly. are you awesome. kidding <laughs> no, it's just in Pennsylvania. Yeah. It's like a, wow. a local beer or something. Yeah. Totally. Pennsylvania is just so gorgeous. It's a slightly bit further way around for me, but it, it misses New York City and New Jersey. Uh, I would rather drive, A, to miss New York City and New Jersey, but to drive through Pennsylvania, I just adore the trees oh, yeah. and the the hills, the undulations, and oh, it's so gorgeous. I'm like, I'm yeah. going that way. To hell with it being further. It's yeah. gorgeous. Actually, I couldn't come back that way because they had closed off um, 84. Something had gone. I oh, was at 81. One part, and they chopped me off. And I ended up to go to 87 and 87, which very disappointed me. But um, going, uh, I went through Pennsylvania, and it, it, it's just heavenly. It's a beautiful state. It's gorgeous. Yeah. It's gorgeous. That, 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 that ride heading heading towards the center of the Midwest and you go through Pennsylvania and and the the road goes up and you can see it feels like you're flying. You know, oh, and, and it and it's straight. You you can read books, you can do it <laughs> while you're driving. And the road is incredible. Wow, this is beautiful. And New York's beautiful where I live, but those just when you're on the interstate usually it's kinda of a bit drab and boring. When you're on ninety five going south it's just like blah the whole way. But Pennsylvania, I mean, I I'll go that way any day of the week. It's so gorgeous. Well, there's a there's a meeting, there's a meetup or something going on uh, beginning of October. Bob says he's going to keep us posted. Let, let me see if I can find the email. Yes, that was, if it was, I'm going to the one in uh, back down in Carolina again in the middle of October. Um, they're having one down at Lake Norman um, in uh, Carolina. It's just outside Charlotte, North Carolina. It's the same group that we met up with last weekend. Um, so I'll be totally going down to that one. I just got the, this email from actually Brian forwarded to me um, by from uh, Dottie Ricard. Please forward this message to Bob in Philly. I'm, I'm not in Philadelphia, by the way. Philadelphia is actually two hours from me. Um, I'm more north. <clears throat> I don't have his email address. Uh, my husband, Bill, and I would like to open our home 
to a local uh, TOP gathering the first mm-hmm. weekend of October, the 5th and 6th. If wow. anyone listening to the Collective Imagination radio show is interested in an East Coast gathering, we live about an hour west of Philadelphia in southern Lancaster County. Wow. Um, Lancaster, L-A-N-C-A-S-T-E-R mm-hmm. County, and are surrounded by the Amish community. Uh, how cool it was, So anybody who's interested, and I'm sure we'll get more details on that um, before the show on Monday. Oh, it would be fun. Sounds lovely. Yeah. yeah. I could do weekend. I could totally do that one too. <laughs> yeah. Let's just Might have a from you, Jerry. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I totally could do that. Just the weekend is a bit of a problem, but I swapped so far, and I'm going to swap for the, the one in um, middle of October. But if there's a will, there's a way. There always is. I'm. Sh- I'm sure it'll 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 happen if it's meant to. Well, exactly. I I when I want to do something. Well, also if it's invited. Mm-hmm. Yep. And lovely. Mm-hmm. Sounds brilliant. That's what I go around doing nowadays. I don't project and say, this is what I want. I say, wouldn't you like to come forward? I'll enjoy the space with you. Nice. That's what I am go about doing now. It works so well. Invitation. Invitation, Invitation. Yeah. yeah. Why don't you share a moment with me? Lovely. Well, mm-hmm. the invitation has gone out. Yeah. Great. We are down to our last two minutes here. So Already? Already. <laughs> Shoot. Um, I want to say thank you to everybody. Barbara and Judy in the chat room. Awesome. I love your comments. Everybody who t- uh, tuned in from Whitney's group. Whitney, are you still there? Okay, she's probably yes, beginning. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm here. We're here. Mm-hmm. I wanted to uh, wish you guys, you know, have a great time. Hello? And Whitney? And Whitney? Yeah. Maybe later Hello? on, like around 10 o'clock my time, I'll look for you on Skype. And we can we can still have a little chat with the group. Fantastic. We'll be here. Okay. I can't hear it. Okay. Tell, them, tell them, yes, we heard it and we'll see them. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> and uh, uh, Jerry, yeah. also, Jerry, thank you. Well, thanks for listening to my uh, usual poems. <laughs> oh, Bob, good. thanks for the meditation. Mm, anytime. Cool. Anytime. Yeah. Awesome. Liking it. <laughs> I almost want to poem every single show now. I'm like, I'm going to be like, Oh, I need a poem. <laughs> <laughs> I need my poem fix. <laughs> <laughs> and we want to welcome we want to welcome everyone to tune back in next week, uh, Monday for the One People Radio Show, eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Tuesday, the Collective Imagination, and all the other Five D Media Network shows throughout the week. You can catch on Five D Media Network dot com. Archive will be available shortly after the show. And we see everyone next week. Next week. Next week. <laughs>